Have you ever felt like Blender's hair particle system is just too complicated? Well, today we're gonna to be looking at simplifying it so you can create this needle felt puppet look. I'll also be showing you how to model the character. And if you stick around to the end of the video, we'll walk through the texture process as well. But let's dive in and actually use the default cube. So we're gonna grab the default cube and we're gonna hit control three. Now we're going to grab our object here and we're gonna search for convert to mesh. Now, when we tab into edit mode, it will have applied that subdivision to our cube. So we'll tab into edit mode here, make sure that you are in vertex selection mode, and then you're gonna to come to the bottom of the cube. We're going to select just this one point here at the bottom. Now up here, we're gonna turn on proportional editing. Now, when we move this up on the Z axis, you can see how we can use our mouse wheel to scroll this in and out. So let's go ahead, snap back to front view here with that vertex selected. I'm gonna hit G, Z, and I'm just gonna scroll this mouse wheel up and I'm just gonna pull this up till we get a little kind of mushroom head shape there. Perfect. Now back here in front view, I'm going to tab over to sculpt mode and I'm going to grab the grab brush here. Now I can change the size of the brush with the F key. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger and I'm just gonna grab these edges here and kind of pull these down, maybe pull this up. And what I'm doing here is just adding a tiny bit kind of randomness to the shape just to make it a little bit more interesting. Perfect. Now we have our mushroom cap head. Let's go ahead and create the body. So we'll go ahead here, we'll add another cube and we're gonna do the same thing, hit control three, but this time we're not gonna convert it to mesh right away. We're gonna tab into edit mode here. And what we're gonna do is get this body to kind of fit the size of our cap here. So we'll scale this down into edit mode here. And we're gonna add one edge loop down here at the bottom. So hit control R click there, and then we can just go ahead, drag this down. You can see how that's giving us that kind of nice round bottom. I'm gonna turn on X-ray mode here so that I can select all the way through, grab these top points here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this in there. So now you can see we have a little kind of mushroom body. So let's grab the head here, and we're just gonna turn off X-ray mode and just rotate that head back ever so slightly. And now we'll be able to see our character's face. Perfect. Now we'll go ahead and grab this, convert this to a mesh, and we'll grab this here and we'll hit Control J to join. Now right click and shade auto smooth. And if you get an error like that, where it is doesn't have enough geometry to kind of smooth out, you can come over here to the mesh tab, normals, just crank this up to something like 60 and that should disappear. Perfect. Now we are going to be using the quick fur system to begin the fur particle system on here, which utilizes UV maps. So this has to have a proper UV map. And if I come here to the UV editing tab and select everything, you can see it looks a bit odd because it was based off of a cube UV map. So we're gonna press two, switch to edge loop here in edit mode, and then we're gonna alt click. We're gonna alt click that front center one and that side center one. And we should have a perfect edge loop all the way around. Do that for the cap as well. Just that middle line on both the horizontal and vertical path. And then we're going to press U, mark seam. We're gonna select everything here and press U and unwrap. And that will give us kind of a simple island package there. We can go ahead, Press A to select all those islands and search for pack islands. And then just leave the default settings, hit OK. And you'll see that it'll give us a little bit better of an island distribution there. Perfect. Now what we can do is switch back to object mode and we can go ahead and name this object something like mushroom. And for the eyes, I just used a little curve and sphere. So you can just go ahead, add a cube again, just add control three there, scale that down until you get about the size you want. I'm gonna bring that out to the front there and then we can grab a mirror modifier. And then for a mirror object, we'll select the mushroom. And then now when we move this across, you can go ahead and create some little eyes there. Now for the curve, I just go ahead, add a Bezier curve there. Tab in the edit mode, we're gonna go ahead, delete all those vertices, grab this draw brush here, go to surface, and then just give them a little kind of quirky smile. Perfect. Now with that selected, we'll come over here to the geometry here. We'll twirl that tab down under the curves and you can just crank that depth up until you get kind of a awkward little stitchy looking mouth and then tap on fill caps there. Great, now we kind of have our silly little face to add to our character. So first I'm gonna go ahead, convert this to mesh and convert this to mesh. And I'm just gonna join those together and call that something simple like face. And just as a bonus, if you're interested, you can actually get these full project files from my Patreon. I also share longer recordings of some of my projects and I put extra materials on there as well. 
but let's get back to the tutorial. So to begin that process, we're gonna go ahead here and after you've unwrapped your map, you should be good to go. Search quick fur, and that's just going to apply the geometry nodes based curve system. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead, open the asset browser and click here. So now what's going to happen is you're gonna notice here that you have your mushroom object and then you have the curves object. So rather than selecting the mushroom object to adjust your curves, you need to make sure you have the actual curves object selected. Then what we can do is come up here under modifiers. And now you can see that we have a full list of modifiers. The big important ones here are going to be interpolate hair curves, where if we turn this one on and off, you can see it's taking those base hair curve profiles and adding a bunch around it. So what you can do is crank your density basically to as high of a number as your computer can handle for this effect. But you can go ahead and turn down the viewport amount here so that you can work in your viewport faster without it affecting your speed too much. But let's go ahead, I'm gonna leave that by default. And here you'll see we also have the hair curves noise and the frizz hair curves. So we're going to leave those here as well, but turn them off for now. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead, drag a curve hair profile on there, and we're gonna drag this up above the noise and frizz because we want those to affect the curvature of our hair as well. We're also going to turn off existing guide map, which is using guide maps established up here because we wanna create curves all over. Perfect, you can already see this is looking a bit more messy. So first we're gonna turn up the frequency. So if you remember, I said that needle felting is kind of pulling out the, the needle felt and pushing it back into itself over and over and over. So to simulate that, we're gonna crank that frequency up, which is gonna give us all those kind of curves there like that. And you can see how now we're getting a bunch of curves. I'm gonna go ahead, turn down my viewport amount so you can easier see what we are doing. Great, now what we're going to do is go ahead and just crank up that radius because the other thing is that it's not a bunch of tight curls on that felt. It's kind of like all spread out around the whole thing. So by cranking this radius out, you can see how now we're starting to affect the entire object and cover the entire object. I'm gonna set mine to around something like 0.25. And if you've been following along, that should work for you as well. Great, now what we can do is go ahead and turn on the hair curve noise. Now the noise here can be adjusted by the distance. We can also choose to preserve link. Now, if I go to wireframe mode here, you can see how much distance we're already adding to our object because we're kind of trying to simulate that needle felt, which is just building hair on top of hair. So if we go ahead and click preserve length, that can help preserve some of that. Let's go ahead here and switch back to solid view. You can see that if we crank our distance up here, it will further push out the distance of that noise and give us a little bit of a messier look. So I'm just gonna add a few in there, 0 0.05 should work. Now I'm gonna turn this off so we can see exactly how frizz hair curves is affecting our object as well. Again, we can turn on preserve length and then we can go ahead and just bump that distance. And you can see how this is just adding frizz to everything. Perfect. Now, if we go ahead and turn these both back on, you can see we're starting to get a pretty convincing result here. And then what we wanna do is come back up here to interpolate hair curves. I'm gonna turn the viewport density back up there. And now you can see my entire object here is covered in fuzz. Now, this is where the density comes into play. You wanna crank this as high as you can. So if I set mine to 3000, you can see that I'm getting a much more convincing result. So just set that to whatever you can. But we wanna create a few more kind of random frizzes in there as well. And what if you want to create a tighter look? Well, if you want to create a tighter look, then what you're going to want to do is come back here, take that radius and just crank that radius down. And the smaller you get that radius, the little bit more of a tighter look you're going to have. And you may need to come in here and adjust your hair curve noises too, so that the distance is a little less. Now, the problem with going in a bit tighter, you will maintain more of your shape, but you're gonna to have to crank up the density higher and the interpolate curves to match. But let's look at how we can add those random hair frizzes as well. Now here, it gets a bit difficult to select your object because it is covered in so many hair frizz. So what we're gonna do is come over here to the outlier and grab our object. Now we're going to add a hair particle system, click plus here and just name this fuzz and you can name this fuzz as well. Now, if you wanna see what you're doing better, you can go ahead and click here to turn off that hair curve system from geometry nodes and we're gonna click hair here. And it's going to give you hair that is way too long. I don't know why, but the default is four meters long for hair in Blender. We're just gonna go ahead and crank that all the way down. And this number may vary for you, but we'll just set that to something super low like there. Now we'll click advanced here, and then we'll come down here under the viewport display and render. 
Now, B spline is supposed to render a bit faster, so we'll go ahead and click that on, and we're gonna set our steps to six. What that means is that each of these hair essentially has six points on it. So it's kind of like subdividing the hair so that you can do more with it. We'll go down here, and you won't be able to see that in the viewport unless your strand steps in the viewport display are also cranked up. So if your computer can handle it, go ahead and set that to the same as your render. Perfect. We'll go ahead and adjust this material later, but for now, let's leave that and we'll come up here to the physics and then we'll add Brownian. Now by adding this Brownian to the physics, it'll go ahead and give us this kind of wonky hair everywhere. So let's turn our curves back on. And since I'm opting for more of kind of a frizzy look with the hair curves, I'm gonna need to make them quite a bit longer. So I'll just go ahead and crank up this distance until you start seeing them poke out there. And then since I made them longer, I'm gonna adjust the Brownian. And now you can see I'm getting a pretty good frizzy look. So first of all, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna grab our mushroom here. We're going to create a character for mushroom, and then we're going to create a mushroom fuzz. Over here, we'll grab this asset browser here, and we're gonna turn this into a shader editor. After that, let's go ahead and grab our hair curves here, go to the material, and by default, it gives it a fur material. We're actually gonna bump this over to mushroom fuzz. And then under mushroom fuzz, what we're gonna do is delete this and add a principled hair BSDF. So if you search hair, you can select principled hair BSDF there and plug that into the surface. And with that, we're ready to begin our shading. Next up, what I'm gonna do is go ahead, grab the mushroom here, come to the fuzz particle system, come down to render material, and make sure this is set to mushroom fuzz as well. So what we're going to do is actually draw the hair from our character based off the image texture for the base mesh. So let's look at how we can do that. So I'm gonna need to go ahead here, hide the curves, and I'm going to disable particles for now and grab the character here and switch over to texture paint mode. Now with that character selected, I'm gonna wanna make sure that I have the mushroom slot selected here. Now I'm gonna go ahead, drag the base color off here and search for a image texture color. Now we need to create a new image texture. So let's create new here and then let's just choose a kind of base color for that mushroom. So I'm gonna go ahead, pick kind of a yellowish base like that. Now I'm just gonna leave mine at a low res because I'm not going to be using much detail, just a few color splotches. Great, and you can see we're starting to get that over here. So I'm gonna make sure I have that mushroom selected up here so that's visible. So then what you wanna do is switch to texture paint mode and I'm gonna grab this paint bucket here. Now I have paint mask selection up here and you'll notice here that our object here is whited out. If I tab into edit mode here and I select this entire hat by just pressing L, I can go back to texture paint mode and now that's there. And if I go ahead and select a color such as the red up here with the paint bucket, I can click and just fill up the cap. And just like that, we should have everything that we need. Now make sure to go ahead and save this image. And then I'm gonna turn my curves back on. What we're gonna do is in the shader menu, go ahead, grab this mushroom here, just copy that. And then we're going to take that over to the hair with the curve selected and paste that into there. If we drag that into our color, you can see that now our needle felt color is matching. However, we want this to look a little bit more kind of realistic. So first let's adjust the roughness settings here. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 0.75. That's going to give us a rougher, more plastic look. We can leave radial roughness at three. And if you want, you can crank up random roughness to like 0.25 and give it a bit more realism. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and bump the color. So if we go ahead, drag out this color here and drag this out and search for curves info, we can get curves info random here, and you can see how it's creating kind of a random black and white based on each selection of the color there. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead here and drag this color back here. We're gonna do a hue and saturation value. We're gonna drag that out there. And what we can do is begin kind of lowering the value here and maybe boosting the saturation. Search for a mix color. That's going to give us this node right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag our base color here and this hue and saturated adjusted color here and drag this into here. Now for a factor, we're going to use random. And what that will do is kind of spread out those dark and hue altered uh, fur throughout the entire thing and give us a much more realistic looking fuzz here. Now let's go back into our object and we can go ahead here and turn on our particle system. Probably need to pull your face out to kind of just sit out above the hairline right there. Black material there 
for a face and turn that roughness up. And that's how I went about creating this little mushroom family. This is the exact process. If you'd like to see how I rigged these characters so that you can animate them yourself, I actually covered that in a YouTube short on my channel already. Double Gum, somebody who promoted on this channel before, is actually working on a cool needle film material. So go check out their store page and maybe follow them for updates as well.